Okay, welcome to our last sort, which is merge sort, the most efficient sort we have studied so far. Uh, merge sort is going to be a recursive sort. And if you remember what we said about how you think about recursive solutions, you don't think about steps to solve the problem. Instead, you think about how you could make your input smaller, and then imagine you have solutions to the smaller inputs and ask how you could use those solutions to answer your question. So if the question we're trying to answer is, how do you sort a list? Uh, the first step is deciding how are we going to make this list smaller or break this list into pieces. And a common way to do it would be to divide it in half. So here we divide it in half, and then we pretend that we are able to sort each half separately. So now we have a sorted list on the left and a sorted list on the right. And so the last step would be to merge those sorted lists together into a single list that's in order. Okay, well, how are we going to uh, solve the sorting of the left half and the right half? What sorting algorithm are we going to use? And the answer is we're going to use merge sort. So here's a recur here's an overview of the recursive solution. Um, we're going to merge sort, and rather than sorting the entire array, we're going to think about uh, only sorting it between some starting index and some ending index. Uh, and the way we're going to do it is we're going to find the middle. We're going to merge sort the left half. We're going to merge sort the right half. And then there's a completely separate method that's not recursive called merge. And the job of the merge method is this last step where we combine the two. All right, we're thinking about what's the base case because this uh, solution doesn't have a base case yet. Pause and think for a minute. In class, most people said that the base case was something like uh, if the array that you're sorting is size 1, um, or if the array that you're sorting is size 0. Um, but the way that you, and that's right, uh, if there's nothing left to sort, then we're going to return immediately. Um, but it would be wrong to have an if statement that says if array.length is less than or equal to 1, um, because array.length is never going to change. Um, when we merge sort the left half, we're not actually making a smaller array that we're going to sort. Instead, that's what the start and end index are for. So if we're going to merge sort the left half, we're just going to change the ending index to be the middle of our existing array. And if we're going to change the right, and if we're going to merge sort the right half, we'll change the starting index to be the middle of the array. Um, so we do we do want the base case to be uh, if we're handed an array that's too short to do anything. Um, but it's not a, actually about the array length. What it's really about is it's about the interval that we're trying to sort. So if so, imagine start index equals end index. In that case, there would be exactly one thing for us to sort, but that would be a base case. If start index, uh, so if end index is one larger than start index, then there would be two things to sort. And that wouldn't be a base case because we could still split it into a left and a right half. So this would be a fine way to express the base case. Um, if start is equal to end, we can exit because there's just one thing to sort. Um, or if start is greater than end, that would be a case where there's zero things to sort. Um, and that's what it looks like for our interval for sorting to have a length of one. Okay, uh, before we turn our attention to the merge step, it might be worthwhile to just look at the full tree of what actually happens when you recursively split and split and split and split. So here's, here's the picture right now. We split to a left and a right. Left gets magically sorted, right gets magically sorted, and then we merge. So how does left get magically sorted? Instead, uh, we run merge sort, and that will split it into a left and a right. And then uh, the interval 7, 3, or the interval from 7 to 3, still isn't the base case, because there's still two things. So we can still split that into a left and a right. And 2 and 6 is still length 2, so we can split it into a left and a right. So this is a picture of what happens. We take the left part of the original array and we split it. We take each of those and we split them. Only once we have uh, intervals that are length 1 do we start to merge things back together. So when we merge 7 and 3, they're in order. 2 and 6 get merged to be in order. This list and that list get merged to be in order. And then finally, this list merges with the right hands to be in order. So if you want to pause the video and think about this process of splitting until you get individual numbers and then merging those pairs back together, 
that's the full picture of what Merge Sort is doing. All right, so now let's focus just on the Merge step. So this is a, a method that's different than Merge Sort. This is part of Merge Sort. This is just the last step. Um, and this method isn't recursive. It's going to have a loop in it. And the job of the method is the following. If we have uh, if we have a list on the left that's already sorted, and we have a list on the right that's already sorted, how can we merge them together? And the way that it's going to work is we're going to have a temporary array that's just a bunch of empty locations. And one at a time, we're going to compare four and one, which one's smaller. And whichever one's smaller, that'll be the first thing that we copy into this temporary array, which is going to hold all of the merged elements. And so then, once we've copied one, that one's done with, so we'll move it over, and we'll compare three and four. And so we'll, over and over again, compare whatever the smallest number on the left and the smallest number on the right are, copy them one at a time into the temporary array, and then at the end, the temporary array will have the sorted list. Um, the problem is we don't want the sorted list in the temporary array. We want it back in the original array. So the last step is you have to copy the numbers back into the original array. Um, I think it's easier to see this with an animation. But because I am terrible at animating, we're going to do it this way. <clears throat> so here in the bottom is the array that we're trying to sort. And I have a list on the left that's in sorted order, 4714 and a list on the right that's in sorted order, 1, 3, 9, 17. Here's my temporary array, which is the same size as the array I'm sorting. Um, and that's just convenient because it's going to let us use the exact same indices to copy things into. So if I want, sorry, so the here's what it's going to look like. Um, we'll have three integer locations, three integer indices that point at what is the smallest number in the left list that we haven't copied yet, What's the smallest number in the right list that we haven't copied yet? And then what's the next location in the temporary array that we're going to copy into? So here's what the full process would look like. I ask, uh, if I want to merge these two lists, I say, OK, which is smaller? The smallest thing on the left or the smallest thing on the right? Ah, it's the smallest thing on the right. So it gets copied over. Um, but now the smallest thing on the right is going to be the next element over. And the next free location is going to be the next element over. All right, so now I repeat in a loop. I say, which is the smallest? The smallest thing on the left or the smallest thing on the right? It's still the smallest thing on the right. So that copies over. And then next increments. There we are. And then right increments. And now I ask, which is the smallest? And now the smallest thing is the thing on the left. Um, what I want you to notice is we need this, uh, loc we need an integer location next because we don't know what order uh, these are going to copy over in. And so right now, the index for left is here, which would be uh, parallel in the temporary. It would be right here. Um, next is not the same as left. And next is also not the same as right. All three are kind of separate from each other. Um, so let's keep, keep going. So uh, left is the smallest. So it's going to get copied over to here, next increments and then left increments. And so we keep going like this until eventually the entire temporary is filled in. In order to make this easier for ourselves, um, let's imagine that we have a couple of indices that are never going to change. S1 is going to be the start of list 1. E1 is the end of list 1. S2 is the start of list 2. E2 is the end of list 2. So take a minute and see if you can fill out some pseudocode for the merge method. Um, sorry, not pseudocode. Why don't you take my pseudocode and uh, translate it into actual code? So as an input, we have, uh, oh, sorry, let's, let me change this. OK, why don't you have your method signature look like the following? Merge, and remember, this is not merge sort. This is just one part of merge sort, which is the step where you merge together two lists. Um, the inputs are the array that we're in the process of sorting, this temporary array that we're going to merge results into, S and E1, which is the start and end of list 1, and S and E2, which is start and end of list 2. Um, remember, we've got three indices that are moving. We have left, which is the smallest number in the left list so far. Right is smallest number in the right list so far. And next is uh, an index in temp that we're copying the next thing into. So we're going to have some kind of loop. And you can think if you want a for loop or a while loop. 
where over and over and over again, we're gonna compare the values at left and right, whichever one's smaller copies into temp, and then you have to update whatever pointers need updating, whatever of the, whichever of these index variables needs updating. Um, and then once you have finished comparing all the things that need comparing, um, there might still be numbers left over that you need to do something with. So you should kind of think about what might that look like at the end. All right, take a couple of minutes. So here I have filled a little bit more in. <clears throat> so current left uh, is going to get initialized to the start of list one, which is what's depicted here. Current right is going to get initialized to the start of list two, which is depicted here. And next location gets initialized to the start of list one, except we're only going to use it in the temporary. So it's a parallel index to the S1 here, except it's in the temporary. OK, I'm using a while loop. Um, because here's, here's my kind of thinking about when I want to loop. What's happening inside the loop is I'm comparing the value from the left list to the value from the right list. So I would only want to do this loop if there are still values in both the left list and the right list to compare. Um, if I've already assigned all the values in the left list, for example, uh, then, I, then there's nothing in the left to compare to the right, and so I wouldn't want to do the while loop. So that's my while condition. While we're not done assigning things on the left, and also we're not done assigning things on the right. In other words, as long as there are two numbers to compare, then we'll compare them, we'll copy, we'll increment what it needs incrementing. OK, um, but what does this look like in actual code? Um, if you think about how do we know if we're done with a list, current left is the next thing in the left list that we have left to look at. So as long as current left is less than or equal to the end of the list, I know there's still more things to look at. We only run out of things once left is larger than E1, because that means we've already assigned the last element in list one. And on the right, current right, uh, we still have things to assign until current right is larger than E2, because that would mean we've assigned the last thing in list two. So that's my version of what the while loop looks like. Um, don't forget that you have to increment the next location from temp. Um, so if you copy from the left, yeah, we need to increment left, but all the time, no matter what, we need to increment log. So the last thing that needs to be done <coughs> is uh, maybe all the numbers from the left list get copied, but there's still a whole bunch of numbers on the right list that need copying. That's possible. So in that case, we would need to have an if statement for that. We'd ask, if there are still numbers on the right, then let's loop to assign the rest of them to the remaining elements of temp. Um, same thing, if there are still numbers on the left, because maybe all the numbers on the right ended up being smaller than all the numbers on the left, then we'd have an if statement to test for that and loop over all of them and copy them to temp. So I will let you fill out that last part. And then don't forget, once you have a completely merged list in temp, you have to copy them one at a time back into the original array. It's always a good idea to test your code, especially code this complicated. There are a lot of ways it could go wrong in small details. Um, so a good way to test it would be something like this. Uh, let's make an array that looks just like the example. So I've got a sublist from 4 to 14, and I've got another list from 1 to 17. I'm going to make a temp array that's the same size as my original array. And now I'm going to run merge, and I'm going to give it the array and the temp, and then this is start of list 1 is index 0. End of list 1 is index 2, which is 14. Start of list 2 is 3, which is this index. And the end of list 2 is 6, which is that index. So I'm identifying two sublists within my array. Um, and then you'd want to go ahead and print the array afterwards, because if it's all worked, um, this should end up merging the two lists into a single sorted list. So you would, of course, go ahead and create the method called merge. And there's array, and there's temp, and this is S1, and this is E1, and this is S2, and this is E2. And then your code here. And now you're all ready to test. Once that's done, the last step is to take a working version of merge and use it inside a recursive method, merge sort. 
Um, and then you will finally have... It's always a good idea to test your code. Um, so this is how I recommend you test it. Uh, construct a simple scenario, just like the one that you used to think through your original program. So here I've got an array um, that has a, a list on the left that goes 4, 7, 14, so it's already sorted. And I have a list on the right, 1, 3, 9, 17, and it's already sorted. Create a temporary array that's the same size as the original. And now we'll run your merge method with the array and the temp. And then you have to give it the starting and the ending index for list 1 and the starting and the ending index for list 2. So zero to so indices 0 to 2 cover this 4 through 14. Indices 3 to 6 cover 1 to 17. And so then this is the method signature for the code you were just writing. Um, and then at the end, you can print out what your array looks like when you're done, and it should be a single sorted list if you've successfully merged the two sublists together. So go ahead and give that a try. <clears throat> I passed out in class whoop, a single note sheet that has all the information. So it starts off with the idea of the recursive sort, and then here it is depicted visually, and then here's all the complicated work you did on the merge step and how we thought about it. And then at the bottom is just some nice cleaned up odds and ends. So uh, you want to be able to just merge sort an array without worrying about starting and ending indices. So we'll make a version of the method that does that but it runs another overloaded version of merge sort where you actually tell it the starting and the ending index and you pass in the temporary storage. And then that one is going to recursively run itself. I left off the base case here. Uh, but then at the, end of, uh, at the end of each call, it's going to run the merge step, which is this other method down here. So this is sort of a summary of all the ideas so far. Good luck, team.